Order, please join me in saluting the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, thank you everyone for coming out this evening. Um, we do not have any one for the hearing of visitors. Uh, the next item of business for the school committee is the consent agenda. The consent agenda is where we bundle um, routine matters uh, for, from the previous subcommittee meetings. And um, at this point, any school committee member may remove an item for further discussion. Is there anyone that would like to remove an item? Um, okay, well, I'm going to remove a couple of items. Um, I'd like to remove item D. Item H. And item I. And item I. Okay. Can we get a motion to approve A, B, C, E, F, G, J, and K? Make a motion to approve A, B, C, E, F, G, J, and K. Perfect. Second. Okay. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Okay, great. All right. With respect to item D, um, I'd like to personally thank Raymond Henningsen, Jr. for a scholarship um, with regard to teaching. Um, I believe I read that um, this scholarship is to be used uh, for any students. I'll, I'll read it actually so I'm accurate. Um, please accept this application to form the Raymond M. Henningsen, Jr. Scholarship Fund for the graduation year of 2017 for Brockton High School. We're pleased to offer the scholarship to a young man or woman entering the field of teaching. We believe that education is a noble profession that we need to encourage more to enter into. The scholarship is a one-year scholarship in the amount of $200, and it's the hope, and it is their hope that this will help a student in a small way continue their education on becoming a teacher. So I thought that was very nice, so I thought we should recognize Mr. Henningsen. So thank you, Mr. Henningsen. Okay. Um, so a motion to uh, accept the scholarship? Um, as item D. As item D. Okay. Um, any further discussion on it? No? All in favor? Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, uh, item enclosure number eight. Again, this is another... Um, recognition of community <coughs> partners who help out the Brockton Public Schools. Um, on this item, Mr. Bill Pryor, manager of the Walmart store at 700 Oak Street, Brockton, recently donated a variety of school supplies, including notebooks, pencils, crayons, glue sticks, erasers, to the Raymond School. These supplies will be put to good use in, in classrooms. So we certainly appreciate Mr. Pryor and the Walmart Corporation for being generous to our students who certainly will use these supplies. Um, a motion to uh, accept um, the donation as item H, please. Motion to accept the donation okay. from Walmart of Brockton, item H. A second by anyone? Thank you, Ms. Plant. Uh, any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Okay, great. And then again, we have another. This is nice, donations. We like donations. Um, okay, um, enclosure number nine. Sue Matheson, assistant store manager of the Stop and Shop supermarket located at 683 Belmont Street, donated 25 Thanksgiving baskets that were given to Raymond, schools, Raymond School families in need. That is awesome. That makes someone's Thanksgiving, so that is fantastic. So uh, we want to thank Ms. Matheson and Stop and Shop Corporation. Um, that's a nice gift. Um, 
can we have a motion to accept the donation um, to the Raymond School from Stop and Shop as item I? Motion to accept the donation to, from Stop and Shop to the Raymond School as item I. A second. Okay, any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Excellent. Can okay. I make a comment? Absolutely. So today uh, I have the good fortune of visiting the Raymond School uh, for a regular uh, site visit. Um, not only am I really pleased with the culture, the climate, the learning, uh, the UNIDOS program with our little kindergartners, the uniform policy. You know, you walk into that building or even the work that's been done in the facility itself, which for many years you had the pod classrooms. But there's a great feeling in there. You know, teachers doing professional uh, learning communities together, looking at data. Um, it has been, and again, when you looked at how large that school was a number of years ago, we're focused right now on our K-5 population. Um, it definitely is a turnaround in all the best sense uh, of that word, and we're seeing uh, progress uh, instructionally, which is, which is what it's all about. But I will tell you, in looking at a principal like Principal McGrath, and you look at those two donations, one of the best things that we do is to develop business partnerships. The partnership you mentioned from Stop and Shop came about because of a staff member who I think is relative, is an assistant manager you know, at the Stop and Shop on Belmont Street and wanted to do charitable work for families during the holidays. So to see those bags, they actually had a couple left over they're going to use for the Christmas holidays. Um, they were filled with everything that would make a Christmas meal and certainly uh, is uh, certainly intended for, for uh, some of our needy families. Uh, Carol said the families were thrilled you know, to be given, uh, to be given the, the meal packets. It was, just, it was just wonderful. And thank you to Mr. Uh, Henningsen. When you talk about teachers uh, being a focus, you hear us talk about teaching, you hear us talking about diversity in our teaching force. You know, we need to all do a better job, and that is, I'll actually talk about it a little bit tonight, but uh, that is one of our action plans, uh, looking at the diversity of our teaching staff, or just encouraging young people to come into teaching. So um, all of these, again, as you said, there's nothing better than donations and support for the Brockton Public Schools. So thank you to everybody. Okay, um, moving on to communication. Uh, report of the superintendent of schools, learning and teaching. So the best part of our night is when we invite our student, uh, Somto, to, to tell us what's happening at Brockton High School. The Drama Club is presenting its December production, Almost Maine, this weekend, Friday and Saturday at 7.30 p.m. and Sunday at 6 p.m. Tickets are $10 at the door. The senior class will continue to accept donations of clothing and toys at the main office until this Friday. Donations support local families through the Salvation Army. The annual holiday concert featuring the concert band, advanced concert band, repertory chorus in the concert choir will be held next week on December 13th and 14th at 7 p.m. Tickets are $3 or $5 with a donation to the Enterprise Helping Hands Fund. They can be purchased at the door or during school hours at the main office. Last, lastly, Term 2 progress reports will be distri distributed next week, December 19th. Well, oh, that's no. terrible. <laughs> No. And, and again, you know, when we talk about, you know, these things happening at our high school, you know, I think we take for granted when we sit here and we talk about, you know, the drama presentation. And if you haven't seen the December presentation, it is wonderful. It's in the little theater. Seats about, what, 150 people. So you're right on top of the production. It is amazing what they do with the scenery, the acting. It leads them into their, you know, February production leading into our spring production. Definitely worth a take to, to see our students perform. We know what the concert is like on uh, next week, I think Tuesday and Wednesday. You know, get out and see the kids. You know, you close your eyes and you think you're in Symphony Hall. There is nothing better than what our kids are able to accomplish, our high school students. And more important, Somto, when I look at and hear you talk about, I was up at the high school yesterday for a meeting and the principal's conference room is filled with toys and filled with things for children that are probably much, much less fortunate to make sure that they have the Christmas they deserve, or the helping hands, which you know, many of us read in the enterprise, you know, helps so many of the needy families in our area. So there's nothing better than watching our children perform. 
uh, watching them give of themselves to, to needy causes, and it's what really makes Brockton High great. So please take that back to, I know you do morning announcements. Well, I, Brockton High does morning announcements, so can you share with them that we really do appreciate everything that they're doing. We're looking forward to seeing them perform during the next couple of weeks and thank them for supporting members in our community. Okay, is that it? Okay, very good. Thank you. All right, so um, let me start with our charter school barometer update. Um, you know, this week, or I guess it was a week or so ago, uh, Deputy Superintendent Thomas uh, sat down with um, the charter school administration at their request, telling us that they are moving back to the city. Um, we were concerned because we met with them, I believe, uh, early, uh, just before we went on the Thanksgiving holiday, and they wanted to move back to the city by the 5th of December. We certainly spent quite a bit of time looking at our tier two bus routes, making sure we had things in place. Um, we're again continuing to work cooperatively with them. We were very frustrated when we really didn't hear from them up until last Thursday, and again Monday was the 5th. You know, Deputy Superintendent Thomas was seeking out, trying to find out if inspections had been had, if the building was going to open. Uh, and in fact, uh, you know, because of that phone call, I, I think we've pushed it down a week. We're now looking at possibly December 12th. We don't have any firm. It was day confirmed today. Okay, so it is now confirmed that they will reopen in Brockton on uh, December 12th. As I said, it will be tier two with our busing. We continue to try to make adjustments to that. The number continues to be uh, Brockton students, 238. Um, and I'll continue to update you on uh, what happens when they, when they move back. Um, I'm sorry, yeah? Does that mean that 238 will be bust or not necessarily? It is not. I want to say the number was 189. It's um, 187. Four, four buses. Um, west um, gets a bus wet to pick up students at the west side of the city. Um, two over to go to north side and um, the east side gets one. So it'll be four buses total. Um, the pickup time is about 7, 10 a.m., which is the same time window for middle school students. Um, dismissal is at 4 p.m. Um, after the last run, the elementary run. Uh, they get out at 3.35. Um, we cannot make a 3.35 pickup, so the closest we could do would be 4 o'clock because obviously the elementary runs go to about um, 3.45, so by the time they could get over to their um, south side location, it was about 4 o'clock. Okay. And they do have uh, half days every Friday. Um, they requested a 1.30 um, pickup time, and we could not accommodate that because of the Brockton High buses, so it's going to be 1 o'clock. Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay. Okay. Any, well, anyone else on anything with the charter school? Any questions or comments? Okay. Okay, uh, moving on to an update uh, on our code of conduct. As I was telling you earlier, we did meet on the 21st of November. We had uh, Larry Derringer from Engaging Schools. We had a number of staff from uh, Brockton High School, including many of our deans and assistant deans, if not all of them. Uh, Brockton Education President Kim Gibson, Ray Shirtliff, who you were int introduced to through our district capacity project, he will be our facilitator. Um, after the meeting, uh, we, we, will, we have not had a chance to debrief yet, but we will talk as a district about looking at our student handbooks, uh, possibly putting together a community task force to look at our code of conduct. Uh, and I also had asked the school committee members if we can have a representative or two, certainly from the school committee, to serve on this as we go forward. I, I know a number of you had concerns about jobs. Many of these meetings will probably have to be later in the day. We'll try to work something out with you to see who's able to, to be part of this task force. It's a lot of work. We feel very good about moving forward and looking at, and I don't want the focus to just be Brockton High. We keep talking about a code of conduct from the time a little kindergartner comes, you know, understanding, you know, the elementary code of conduct handbook into middle schools. By the time they get to the high school, it's something families will be familiar with. And, you know, what is expected to be a student in the Brockton Public Schools, obviously developmentally appropriate, you know, for our students. So this is something that will not happen overnight, but it is work that we will talk about at our retreat. 
We'll talk a little bit about a timetable and what our expectations are, because every year we do have to approve, the school committee approves as policy, your handbooks. So we do have to move, when I say quickly, at least on, you know, some of the work will be done on those areas, those priority areas that we want to enforce, um, but also bringing in some community partners uh, to, to start to have this dialogue. Anyone? Have any? No? Okay. Great. Okay. Um, so moving on to, uh, I did start to talk to you about the Urban Superintendent Network, which is a network of urban superintendents. There are 24 districts represented, Brockton obviously being one of them. Uh, this past Friday, we met as we do the first Friday of every month, and our goal was to look at advocacy this year. And, you know, we're not the only ones feeling what we're feeling. This is across every urban district. And it really is time for us to start to push back, whether it's making sure that our kids have what you call equity in education, making sure, and there are already rumblings uh, in the legislative group about looking at the Chapter 70 Review Commission's recommendations on you know, supporting our schools so that our children have, again, it's the same thing, it's equity in education. It's looking at those areas that back in 1993, when Ed Reform came about and Chapter 70 came in, and it was a boom for a place like Brockton to make sure that we had a, a per pupil um, expenditure for our students that made sense for the type of education that we want to have. We've seen that eroded over the past number of years, uh, specifically during these times where we're seeing grants dry up, you know, we continue. It's amazing to me that we have stayed afloat as when I sit here and talk to you about all the wonderful things at Brockton High and the drama and the music and all of those programs that you as a school committee have committed to and us as a city have committed to so our children have uh, certainly a, a, a well-rounded education. But it becomes more difficult, and I would not have told you four years ago, having been in the district many years, that one of the biggest parts of my job would be this kind of advocacy. You know, working with other superintendents, putting together position papers, making sure that we're in front of the uh, joint uh, house ways and means when it comes time to talk about, but I'm not waiting till March this year. You know, we're already putting ourselves in groups and making sure that superintendents are representing. So if I can't be there for a certain advocacy, I know that the position for urban superintendents. I even had a conversation with Representative Claire Cronin and have asked if the urban superintendents can be invited to a gateway city, uh, gateway, yeah, gateway city caucus, it's called. So you have all the representatives, the senators and the representatives there in one room. And rather than us piecemeal, my go-to, you know, my going to our group of uh, legislative uh, representatives and senator and another superintendent, we have them all in one room, we can answer the questions. While there are differences in the districts, there are many uh, similarities and challenges that we face. So this advocacy work, I'm going to tell you, um, is going to take up a lot of time. I think it's well worth it. It's not only the direct certified, we're still waiting. We're waiting to look at the inflation rate. We're waiting to look at what they're doing with the direct certification. I can't even right now pay attention to the changing of what's happening in Washington, D.C. You all just saw the uh, nominee for the Secretary of Education. Um, you know, I, I'll keep you updated as we continue to get word as to what's happening, but I wouldn't have told you four years ago that it would be about this much advocacy, but um, I think we're up for the challenge and we'll continue to make sure that we're front and center. Um, we also had, uh, speaking of uh, DESI, uh, we had an accountability forum here with um, the ESSA, this is the changes in No Child Left Behind, uh, to our Every Student Succeeds Act that is coming in. Um, I want to thank um, Deputy Superintendent Barry, uh, Executive Director Sal Tarasi, Executive Director um, Ethan Cancel. It was the night of the National Honor Society, so I was over um, at the auditorium with uh, a number of you. Um, congratulations, I think, Mr. Minicello's son. Anyone else? Okay. And um, they were, uh, they went to the forum. It wasn't a case where we actually could do a presentation, but we had actually looked at, as a district, what are the things in accountability that would benefit the Brockton Public Schools. So many times there are things that are held against us with accountability. And when I say held against us, it could be, um, 
It could be dropout uh, graduation rates. Uh, it could be special education students and the number of years. You know, many of them, again, are succeeding, but they're not graduating in four years. Maybe they're taking five years. So th some of these things are blatantly unfair to districts with the great work that we're doing. One of the things, and I know Dr. Tarasi will join me in this, that we continue to talk about is the work that we've been doing for ages on social and emotional learning. You know, trauma-sensitive schools and looking at in an accountability measure, and that's why the DESE was out here, gathering feedback as to what this new accountability measure state by state might look like. One of the recommendations we were making was take a look at some of the things we're doing and give us additional points for the social and emotional learning that, that you know, our day you know, isn't quite what a, a day maybe in a suburb is with some of the things that we're doing. Um, so again, this I think they're planning to have um, their information together to present sometime in February or March. But this was, an, I got there very late in the forum, um, but uh, the DESE couldn't have thanked Brockton enough for the setup. Um, they actually thanked us again on Friday when I went to the urban superintendent's meeting. So we will stay at the forefront of that. Um, another thing that I will let you know is we, um, as a district, when you're looking at the high stakes testing coming in, had applied for a waiver. So the uh, DESE would like you to be using online testing for all of your eighth graders, your fourth graders. We actually had a plan in place because it ta it's a heavy lift when you go into a school, when you introduce computers, when you talk about digital literacy, kids getting used to drag and drop and different things that they have to do. It's different than paper and pencil being able to um, test versus doing online testing. So right now, um, you know, we're waiting to, I'll be able to share more information with you as more information becomes available from DESE. So we'll continue to update you on accountability and on our students and there's testing that'll be coming up in the spring, which will be, um, again, this, this new testing that we'll be using based on, a lot of it based on PARC, but the new uh, next generation test, uh, MCAS 2.0. Um, also, I wanna update you on the diversity task force. Dr. Moran and the Human Resource Office has been heading our diversity task force. This is made up of a number of community members. Uh, Steve Bernard, uh, formerly the president of the NAACP, I think he's handing that role over very soon, if not already, has been instrumental of bringing together a group of about five community members, uh, myself, Dr. Moran, members from our HR office. We've had two meetings. They've been excellent meetings. We have a third one coming up on uh, Monday, December 12th, where we're presenting our action plan based on things that we think are um, things that we can actually accomplish this year. So uh, again, I, I think I, I've said it many times, it isn't just something that the Brockton Public Schools can accomplish. You've heard me certainly talk about it many times, but um, we will move forward and we'll continue to update you. One of the things I know we're looking for is I have been invited to go before the city's diversity task force. Many of you saw that the grade they gave us was not a grade that I would be comfortable with. Um, that being said, they will be uh, doing a readout, I believe sometime in January, uh, of their reasoning uh, for the grade they've given us. And one of the things we would like to do is invite one of their members to be part of our diversity task force. And that way they'll be able to report on what we're actually uh, able to accomplish the challenges that we're facing and what we're looking to do to, to try to move the district forward during a very difficult time of certainly hiring. Um, I also want to mention, and this was frustration on my part, I was at a Title I conference um, on Friday when I started to get phone calls from the office about uh, NECN reporting that there was a bomb threat. And that the bomb threat, I guess it had in, in, uh, in the back was a sign for Palma High School or Palma School District. And instead, at the, wh what did they have? At the bottom of the screen, it said Brockton Public Schools? It was like a, um, it, was, it was an article from a paper out that way, like almost like, you know, a local paper. It was in. But claiming that it was the Brockton Public yeah, Schools. But up above it said, in the caption it said Palma Schools closed for bomb threat and it had a picture of a school sign up, like a message board sign right. up. For some reason, in the first line, it said Brockton. Brockton Public Schools. So, you know, we, we had to alert them. Um, our communications director contacted uh, NECN. Uh, they seemed really, un, you know, 
un what's the word I'm looking for? Unfazed. Unfazed by, you know, what this did when we had parents calling, people were confused, teachers were wondering. So I'm looking to speak to, again, it's not a pound of flesh, you know, why would something like this happen? You know, they claimed human error. You know, I think we're owed an apology. Um, you know, it was disruptive, you know, for a good part of that day. We had to jump on it immediately to let principals know. So that's how we're spending our morning, you know, last Friday. So I just, for those of you that um, certainly got messages about that, that was, that's how we're dealing with that. Uh, also, right now, you've got uh, testing of lead in drinking uh, water samples being taken district-wide. Um, we will, it, it's going to take quite a while. We've got lots of sources of water. Um, and they'll be reporting, and we'll obviously be reporting to you as we go along. Uh, we anticipate that, you know, I I'm sure, you know, most of our, you know, fountains are, are safe, et cetera. We've been putting in the filtration stations throughout. Um, I watch the kids using them all the time, the teachers using them, visitors to our buildings. But we'll continue to update that. I know that's been something that the local newspapers have been reported, as they do every uh, school district uh, in the state. Um, I also want to mention to you, you heard me talk about um, being away at a Title I conference. I had never gone previously. I was invited by our uh, coordinator of Title I, uh, Karen McCarthy. I was very pleased I was there. Not only were the speakers excellent, um, also there were a number of sessions that we attended on preschool opportunities for students, something that we're very much focused on as we start to look at our kindergarten entrance date. Um, and I was very pleased I was there because on Thursday evening they give out, it's called the SAGE Award. And that award is given to the director, and this is throughout the state, there were well over, you know, 150 people there. Uh, many from uh, other Title I so-called directors, coordinators throughout the state. And they give this award for the director that uh, mentors other directors, that truly shares, you know, their expertise, their knowledge, their outreach, and unbeknownst to Karen, it was to Karen. So you've heard Karen McCarthy come before you on a federal stage being recognized, and this was at her local level by her own uh, Title I uh, counterparts. So, so very pleased to be there, uh, an excellent uh, two-day conference. Um, and I do have to tell you, I talked about this at executive team yesterday, the last evening they had what they called a trivia contest. And Brockton, uh, the contingent we had there, there were four or five of us. And we actually joined with a couple of other towns from Waltham, Wilmington, and Freetown. So our team was called uh, Brockton WWF. And we came in number one. So we were the trivia winners out of 150 people. So we were very excited. and. You would have thought that we won. I can't even tell you. We were so excited. So, who was the ringer on the team? Who was the ringer on the team? <laughs> Say, um, Jerry Smith. Jerry joined us. Right. Jerry joined us, and we almost had fisticuffs, Jerry and I. Oh so you can just imagine. We didn't agree, and in the end, uh, the good guys won. It's good. <laughs> but a lot of fun. Uh, in finishing up, um, uh, Somta already shared with you uh, the holiday concerts, the Almost Main. Um, there were lots going on throughout the district with Thanksgiving. Uh, many of our schools did special projects, again, to reach out to, to those in need. And I want to thank everybody here. We had full presence at the holiday parade. That was a terrific day. The weather was absolutely beautiful. Um, people came out, kids came out, and it just makes you feel really good about living in Brockton and being a part of a Brockton community. It was great to see the families out there. So thank you to John Marion, to all the people that worked on the parade committee, to our own Michelle Bolton, and all of the students that took part in essay contests. It's just a great time of year. So happy holidays to everybody. Great. Okay. Um. And the uh, a lot of the uh, decorative floats were wonderful. You know the school, the, the schools basically, and the parents uh, with the packs and the PTAs certainly helped out and decorated. And it was a very nice, uh, nice showing. And like you said, the weather was fantastic. Yeah, how did that happen? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it did rain. yeah, it was just beautiful. And I would also like to thank every one of the school committee members because everyone came out for the um, for the parade. Um, I don't know if it was a nasty day if everyone would have came out, but everyone came out, so that was really nice. Uh, so that was good. Um, items to refer to subcommittee. Um, 
Ms. Azak, I know you want to refer uh, and have a facilities subcommittee with regard to warehouse space, so um, we will coordinate that. Um, is there anyone else that would like to uh, have a subcommittee? Yes, Ms. Plant? A question. Sure. Policy manual review. The subcommittee hasn't met yet. Yes, we um, actually have a, a meeting coming up. I think it's the first first week. Was it January? January 17th. Yeah. How often does that subcommittee typically meet? Well, what we're doing is we're working with um, Mass Association for School Committees, MASC. So we, what we're going to do is on the 17th, we're going to present to you, Dr. Cancel has gone through his area of the policy manual along with Jim Hardy, who is the lead for MASC. Dr. tarassi has been working closely. Uh, that's his project. I've asked him to, to lead this year. So we're going to present to you what the template looks like, how the work is being done. It, it's a pretty large project. So I think once we get going, we're going to try to get through every, we've actually assigned to every different office, you know, the superintendent, school committee policies, um, you know, Alto Petronio, all the financial policies. So we've matched up executive directors with their area of oversight, and we're going to go through the same process that Dr. Cancel uh, and Dr. Tarasi have gone through. So you'll see the changes that have been made, recommendations from MASC. We're trying to use as simple language as possible. Our goal, and I'm not sure if we will have it by August, but we'll have a good amount of it done. Because my goal, again, is that every year, come that first meeting when school starts, is that you approve. You know, we, During the year, we will make changes to those policies that need changes. But other than that, I want that date on the bottom to reflect every year that we have looked at that policy manual. Because I'm still seeing things where we've got a 2002 date on the bottom of the policy manual and we're being called out on not looking at our policy when some policies simply haven't had to change. It doesn't mean that they're, they're outdated policies. The date is just, you know, how many years ago now? 14? It's been a while. So um, we'll be doing that uh, certainly in January. And also, I think we just mentioned uh, the, the planetarium is going to be a subcommittee under curriculum, correct? on January 3rd. Yes. We'll be posting that as a subcommittee meeting. Great. Anyone else? No? Okay. Um, unfinished business superintendent evaluation report uh, from the superintendent contract subcommittee meeting. Um, so the superintendent contract subcommittee um, met this evening at 6.15 and the meeting lasted for a half an hour. Uh, we went over the superintendent's evaluation. Uh, the superintendent scored very well. Um, 3.19 was the overall um, uh, number, and she scored proficient. Uh, and those results will um, be forwarded to the state. And with respect to the numerical um, increase uh, correlation to the um, uh, the ratings, uh, human resources will make the appropriate adjustment. Uh, we went through uh, the evaluation uh, with regard to the standards and the goals. And um, overall, uh, the superintendent uh, received a very good report. Um, you know, this, our superintendent um, puts in more hours than anyone I know. Uh, she leads by example. Uh, she um, is certainly a dedicated uh, uh, individual to the Brockton Public Schools. Uh, are you at year 38? I started my 40th in September. Oh, sorry. Well, when you, okay, well. So she's at year 40, so obviously she is committed to this district and this city. Um, and uh, during that uh, evaluation, uh, she uh, offered to meet with uh, individual members uh, on a more casual basis to review uh, any items of concern. Uh, basically that was the overall summation of our uh, subcommittee meeting. If, um, if that is accurate to everyone, uh, I need a motion to approve the uh, report of, from the superintendent contract subcommittee meeting. Motion to approve. Thank you, Mr. Sullivan. A second. 
Thank you, Ms. Plant. Second, any further discussion on that motion? Mr. Sullivan. I'd like to add one thing. You can add two if you want. Just one. Okay. People here uh, don't realize that Kathy Smith is a uh, taxpayer in Brockton. She lives in Brockton. She's worked her way up through the ranks. And you made it to the top. I'm just really impressed that 40 years you do such an excellent job. Every department you've been ahead of, and now you're in, in charge of everything. You just do a real good job. And it's so glad to see somebody from Brockton, uh, uh, these guys here don't remember, Tom, the trouble we had with the superintendents of the past. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Kathy lives in Brockton. We've been to her house. I ride by uh, Crescent Street and I see a car there early in the morning, late at night. It's just a pleasure to work with you. Thank you, Mr. Sullivan. And if you want to see my taxes, I'm glad to share them. <laughs> <laughs> Transparency. Well, there you go. <coughs> nice job. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yep. Uh, anyone else? Mr. Diagostino. Um, Similar to Mr. Sullivan's comments, you know, I, I did want to acknowledge that uh, the level of dedication that um, we see from Superintendent Smith. Um, you know, as Mr. Sullivan mentioned, I've driven by Central many times, off hours, well into the evening, and the lights on in the superintendent's office. I'm, I'm convinced you get your mail there. You, I mean, do you have a cot there somewhere? <laughs> I'm asking Mr. Thomas to build up, and he's fighting me on a particular budget. <laughs> Um, but uh, you are clearly about as committed and dedicated as we could ever ask a superintendent to be. Um, I, I really don't think we could ask you to be more committed and dedicated to the position. So. Anyone else? Okay. Um, so I think that motion was made and seconded. Uh, seeing no further discussion on the motion, all in favor? Okay, great. I think that's all we have to do on that, right? Yep. Yeah, okay, good. Okay, under new business, uh, we also, we had a lot of subcommittee meetings today. So we had a subcommittee meeting. Um, <coughs> what time did that one start? That one started a little later. Um, I believe that one started around 6 o'clock um, with regard to finance. And at that meeting, um, we had a report from uh, Patty Dupuy and Lori Silva uh, with respect to the EEC rate increase and they explained to us that um, uh, the state had adjusted its numbers and in order for us to remain in compliance and uh, be able to offer the services that we offer uh, we needed to consider matching uh, the state's rate for the uh, customers, the, the parents who pay. Um, so we reviewed the numbers with both uh, Patty and Lori and uh, we uh, voted to uh, meet the amounts that uh, the, the rate increase that the state uh, basically has imposed on us in order to remain in compliance. Um, and um, all those rate increases are, were provided to Ms. Midgale so she has all the numbers. Um, I believe that's the gist of the um, subcommittee meeting. Um, so I would like a motion from someone to approve the uh, minutes of the finance subcommittee meeting with regard to the EEC rate increase. Mr. Mr. Gormley beat you to it, but if you'd like to second it, that would be great. Motion to approve the minutes of the finance subcommittee meeting. <clears throat> in regards to the EEC rate increase. Will you be kind enough to second that? Thank you, Mr. Sullivan. Uh, any further discussion on that motion? Okay, seeing none, all in favor? Great, okay. And uh, last but not least with regard to reports, um, there was a memorandum of understanding between the school committee and the custodians. Um, and this really, um, is unfortunate um, that we have to do this. I'd like to um, 
give thanks to the custodians who have stepped up with respect to making sure our kids are safe. What this is about, unfortunately, is about custodians who never, I think, contemplated in a million years that they would have to go outside before kids are in the, uh, in, on the grounds and check for dirty needles. So the custodians have basically stepped up and have agreed uh, that they will um, inspect certain areas, certain schools, um, before the kids get there to make sure that uh, we hopefully don't have any horrible uh, incidents with respect to dirty needles. Uh, there's a member of understanding uh, that they will get a uh, small and reasonable stipend. I believe it's 457 uh, per year. Uh, so once a year they get a stipend of 457 um, to do so. Um, so I'd like to thank all the custodians union um, for stepping up and doing that. Like I said, it's, uh, it's unfortunate that we have to deal with something like that. None of us, I think in a million years, would have ever contemplated in our lifetime that uh, something like this could happen on our ball fields and on our playgrounds and on our schools, school grounds, but uh, uh, the, the custodians um, uh, stepped up and um, Mr. Thomas obviously made sure and is making sure with Mr. Thompson that uh, there's proper training, uh, there's guidelines that they follow to make sure that they are safe because we certainly don't want anything um, stupid to basically happen to any one of them. Um, so so that uh, is basically the gist of the memorandum of understanding. Um, <laughs> okay, so uh, can I have a motion to approve that memorandum of understanding? Motion to approve. A second? Okay, any further discussion? Okay, seeing none, all in favor? None opposed? All right, great. Um, um, we do not need to, at this point, go into executive session. Um, um, any further business? Anyone like to report in on anything? Um, Mr. D'Agostino. Uh, yeah. Three items, real quick. Um, so the um, uh, Kennedy School, two things I wanted to report on that. One is I learned that um, they actually had at their parent conferences a 97% participation wow. in parent-teacher conferences, which I thought was just incredible. Um, and also wanted to congratulate the Kennedy PAC on the uh, one of the most successful um, uh, um, spaghetti the, dinner no, fundraisers. Book. Book, book fair, book, book fair. fairs. Book Thank fair. you. A fair was the word I couldn't come fair, up with. Yeah. One of the most successful book fairs they've ever had. They, they, um, you know, really um, had a lot of volunteers and and um, did a great job and and put a lot of books in classrooms and and the families really came and supported them while they were there for conferences. But it was one of the most successful ones they've had, and uh, I know that they put a lot of work into making that happen. Um, also at uh, South. There was a PAC meeting there recently, um, and um, the um, one of the things that uh, the principal um, Lynch talked about was, you know, trying to um, find ways to reach out to more parents to get them more involved in the in the PAC. So I hope if uh, any South parents that are watching this, um, you know, will uh, take the initiative to to get involved in the in the PAC. They're they're really looking for your involvement and help and. Um, so I just wanted to put that out there. Um, as you can tell, I'm not Mayor Carpenter. Uh, Mayor Carpenter did give me a call before the meeting. Um, some important city business came up that he had to attend to and he sends his regrets that he couldn't be here. Um, I would like to um, thank uh, Brockton's current Mr. Christmas, Dave Gorman, who um, uh, put on another excellent uh, fundraiser. Uh, for children uh, to help them through the holidays. Uh, his annual Jingle Bell Run was excellent, very well attended, um, lots of donations. Uh, he is uh, one of the most generous people you'd want to meet. He puts, he puts a ton of effort uh, into that event every year. Uh, I know Mr. Sullivan was there and saw how many people were there. Um, it's just a great, a, a great event, and he, uh, 
he's like the modern day James Edgar, you know, yeah. uh, with regard to to Christmas. He uh, he just does a great job. Um, it was a good day too. It was a very nice day. It was a very nice day. Um, okay. Yep. Uh, I would to like like Mark. Um, I'd like to thank the uh, Hancock PTA. They did their annual. Um, um, I call it ziti supper. They call it spaghetti, but it, they don't. They're not Italian, so they don't know. Is it so, it is ziti, but they call it the spaghetti supper. But it's really just a pasta supper. But um, they raised money, a lot of money, for the children's helping children's fund, uh, which they do annually. And um, I just like to thank the PTA. They put in a lot of work, a lot of effort, um, and they really uh, they really show over there. You know, I'm sure like all the other PTAs, but. Uh, these parents really care about kids and do a fantastic job of um, organizing the events. You know, the moms really are incredible in terms of organizers, and they they pull off you know great events. Um, and um, we really need to thank them for for that because you know the the trains run on time with uh, with these volunteers, and it's all volunteerism. Um, you know, so uh, that's it for me. Anyone else? No? How about a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Boy, that took a while. All right. Second. <laughs> All in favor? Thank you for coming. Adjourn.